no matter how small your project is, it can benefit from Cypress, Cucumber, and GitHub Actions. And if you don't know what they are, let me explain. Cypress is automated end-to-end -end testing that runs in the browser and simulates a user in the real browser. Cucumber allows you to write these automated tests in plain English with the given when then syntax. GitHub Actions automates the running of all these awesome tools every time you push to GitHub. Therefore, if you're pushing to a branch, someone's raising a pull request, all these tools can run to make sure that nothing is broken. Let me show you what that looks like. If I run the homepage feature test, it will now open a browser and it will run through the two step. As you can see, it visited the URL we wanted and checked that the page title was what we were expecting. And then it also goes to the project sections and checks that the URL on the first project goes to a URL that we're expecting also. Anything a user can do, you can do the same with, with Cypress. It also takes screenshots and records the video. So when it's running on CI, if there is a failure, you do have a screenshot of what failed. You actually have a video of how it got there. In this video, I'm gonna take you through our community website and show you how easy it is to get set up with Cypress, Cucumber, and GitHub Actions. So with just a few lines of JavaScript, Gherkin, don't get scared, that's plain English, and YAML for your GitHub Actions, you can have this automated running on CI every time there's a change push to GitHub. This gives your team, your project, your community, and you the confidence that your project will always work and there'll be no unexpected surprises. Because CI will let you know if something breaks. Don't forget to support my channel by giving the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel below, hit that bell button so you get notified every time I publish a video and go live. To add Cypress to your project, you just need to install it via NPM. And with that, we can do npm install cypress dash dash save dash dev. And it may take a few minutes to install depending on your internet connection and your computer. To open Cypress, you can run mpx cypress open. And this will bring up Cypress with the tests that it's found. And you'll get lots of example tests when you first install Cypress. Hit run and you'll see the test run really fast. And then you can have a look at the breakdown, have a look at more information. Do have a play and get familiar with it. Next step, let's install Cucumber. And there is a Cucumber plugin for VS Code that you can get the syntax highlighting that you see on my screen. Now we want to install Cucumber. We need to install the plugin for Cypress. npm install save-dev Cypress Cucumber preprocessor. And then it will create a Cypress folder. And next, go to the plugins directory index.js, create this file if it doesn't exist, and you add this contents to the index.js file in the plugins directory in the Cypress folder. And this is in the documentation quick start. In the root of your project, add a cypress.json folder. This is the configuration for Cypress. Here I'm asking it to ignore JS files. I'm telling it what feature files to look for, and I've given it a viewport size to run my tests in. Third and final step to get Cucumber working with Cypress. In your package.json file, add Cypress Cucumber preprocessor, you probably recognize that name, and non global steps definition false. And next, in the integration folder, you want to add a feature file. And you can call this whatever you want as long as it ends in dot feature. And you write something like this the feature title, then a description, and your scenario title is in English for you and for other people on the project. The lines that drive the test are the given then. The full scenario is actually given when then. Given something is provided, when I do something, then I expect something. So in this case, we're not clicking on anything. If there was an extra click, it'd be given I open the website, when I click on a certain link, then I expect to see. You may be thinking, how does this English drive the tests? Let me show you. In the Cypress folder, under support, under step definitions, this is where we put the step definitions, also known as step defs. And here we define the step definitions behind the Gherkin syntax that you saw previously. Here you can see I have two then conditions. I see string in the title. So we're going to check that the title has a particular string. And instead of hard coding that here, we're passing in a variable and it comes through here as title. And then we check it here that it is in the title. Therefore, in the Gherkin syntax, we can use this line over and over again. So we could duplicate it and change the string in here for different pages page one, and we can reuse that. So you have this awesome abstraction that allows you to reuse your step definitions. You don't have to keep writing code. Once you've got probably 20 step definitions, that's probably enough to do your entire website. And here is the other one with three strings. I see 
string in string with a string and that's content target attribute we can get the target then we can check the attribute also has the content that we're expecting and again that allows us to reuse this line as much as we want so we could check for a different string website and it could be in a different position it could might not be under projects it might be under contacts and it might not be a href it might be a title this is how flexible it is so you you write the step definitions once and you allow them to reuse them again and again. You can make them as flexible as you want. Now you've seen the test, you've seen the step definitions. Let's run the tests. And we can run this locally by using MPX Cypress Open and you can add that to your package.json if you want to have a consistent command that you can use again. Now it is opened. I can run that feature or I can run multiple features if I need to and you'll see no hands. It is driving the browser as a user would clicking on links and checking the title and checking link details. And then if there are any failures, you can go in here into details and see what happened at any one point and see what was going on. You can go through the history. It also takes screenshots and records the video. So when it's running on CI, if there is a failure, you do have a screenshot of what failed. You actually have a video of how it got there. The final step is GitHub Actions. Let's run this on CI. Let's run this every time someone pushes a change. .github workflows. I've called it test.yaml, but you can call it what you like. I've given it a title, automated tests. And then on push and on pull request open, I have this job that runs. And this job will run, I've called it Cypress Run. And again, that is a name, for, you can call it what you like. And it runs on the Ubuntu latest. And these are the steps that I do. So I check out the code. That's very common. You probably see that on most GitHub Actions. And then the next step is we use Cypress IO GitHub Action version two. And to start the project, we say we start our project with NPM start. And then this will run on GitHub. And if you go to the actions tab, now you can see the actions run. So we can see these actions have run. And if you click on one, you can see it was Cypress run. And if there's any failures, it will go red and show you what failed. And then you can run it locally. The great thing is it should be repeatable locally as it is on CI. I hope you're going to use Cypress, Cucumber and GitHub Actions in your next project. No matter how small your project is, you can really benefit from it. It's very quick and easy to set up and it will benefit your project. Save you and the community and your project team so much time. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'm more than happy to discuss that with you. Don't forget, we do have a Discord server. The link is in the description. And you can join our GitHub organization, get involved with some of our projects. My YouTube channel focuses on open source and getting you into open source so you can find the job, money, clients that you deserve. Open source is not just about coding. It's also about collaboration, networking, and upskilling. It's very important to have an active GitHub profile. Get involved in the conversation, reply to comments, raise issues, raise pull requests. And don't forget there's Hacktoberfest coming up in October where you can get free swag as t-shirts and stickers by contributing four pull requests in October to open source.